Welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm sharing my Paint With Me April 2020 challenge painting. So if you don't know what the Paint With Me challenge is, it's a free monthly challenge that I host for everybody who wants to join. And every month I send out a reference photo that I pick and we all paint the same thing. The thing that is beautiful about it is that everyone always has their own unique perspective on it and whatever comes out from their paintbrush onto paper is different from anyone else's and it's just a beautiful way to celebrate everyone's own unique style and a way to keep practicing consistently without the pressure of having to paint every single day or even every single week like challenges normally are. So if you're interested in joining, you can just Follow the link in the description box below and join for free. So I'll just share in this video the process that I went through to paint my challenge painting and the things that I thought were successful and weren't successful. So the first thing that I always start with usually is the sky and skies are something that I feel like I've been trying to practice more intentionally over the last year and every single time I paint them they seem to get a little bit easier which means to me that I'm starting to improve with all the practice that I'm making and that's all that I can ask for and they just seem to get a little bit easier this time I'm using a cerulean blue but I'm actually really excited because I just ordered some cobalt blue which I've never owned before as a tube paint and I'm interested to see how that works for skies in the future I'm sure it'll be really beautiful and smooth the same way that cerulean is it's just that cerulean definitely has that sky blue color that um, is beautiful but sometimes you know I want something darker so it will be really fun to explore with that new color once I get it. So I'm just coming in and adding a few subtle color changes that I see in the reference photo and um, just adding a little bit of variation along the ridge line for the mountains. And so the next thing I am going to do is paint the mountains. And this part is tricky to me. Um, it continues to be a little bit tricky is knowing when to put the paint down because in the past I've had definitely had that experience where I've layered in the sky and then when I come back to put the mountains over it or whatever's in in front of the sky I put it down too early and the paint starts to bleed everywhere and that's one of those things about watercolor that is definitely something that comes from experience and also knowing your own supplies because your paper makes a really big difference at least in my experience that's what I have discovered the paper and the way that it stays wet and how quickly it dries definitely varies by manufacturer and also it has to do with climate so if the room tends to be more humid or more dry, then that's going to definitely make a difference. And I guess if you're also painting outside, that's going to make a very big difference. If the sun is shining down on your paper, it'll definitely dry faster. And something I haven't done as much of, but I'm starting to do more, is use a hair dryer to dry in between the layers because I'm not a very patient painter and I like to continue going I don't like waiting and so using a hairdryer has helped this time I didn't do it and you can actually see along the ridge line of the mountains I still started a little bit too soon I could have waited for the sky to dry a little bit more because there's definitely some areas where it's bleeding into the sky in a way that I don't want but I actually found a way to fix it later when I came back and added details so the way that I figured out how to sort of fix this mistake is number one, you can see I'm coming back to lift a little bit of the fuzzy paint off, but I decided to paint over it. So I painted on the outside of where the fuzziness is happening, when that blooming is happening into the sky, and I'm adding detail in order to frame and add definition to the 
sort of like the outline of the mountains and um, painting the textures for the side of the mountain ridges was actually really fun it was a little bit of an experiment for me I had done this in the past but it was a little bit more of an unintentional way of painting textures while this time I was a bit more intentional with the strokes and what I was doing so I knew that I wanted to come back and use darker paint and a thinner brush to create details along the ridge line and within it to show that it's a mountain and to provide texture and I also really enjoy painting in a more loose and abstract way so I've been working a lot on showing and representing things in a, in an abstract way. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's basically like paring down the details that I see and translating them into really simple strokes so that whoever's looking at the painting is able to put the information together in order to understand what they're looking at. So in this case, I'm just using the reference photo and looking at where the shadows are roughly and blocking in details uh, in order to convey that they're mountains. And I thought that it was somewhat successful. I think it could have been more successful. And I'll tell you that the reason why I didn't think it was super successful is because again, I didn't wait long enough for the paint to dry. And I think that the details are a little fuzzy, but I chose not to come back and do another layer. I decided just to leave it. That's something that I'm also practicing too is I'm trying to not obsess and fuss over the painting quite as much as I used to and that's also an experiment by itself because I am learning to see what the painting looks like if I just let it go because sometimes I just keep fussing at it and touching it and it ends up being overworked so at this point I don't know what happened but my camera stopped and I didn't get the painting of any of the tree parts so the tree parts are very similar to how I approach the mountain it is a very abstract form of what I see in the photo and here it's it's a grove of trees or I think that's what you call them a grove of trees but all you're really seeing is the texture at the top and then I made sure to leave little areas of white in between so it's not just one big blob so I basically came back and I finished up the painting with the reflections which reflections are also something I've been practicing and I'm going to say that in my self critique of this painting the reflections are the weakest part because I think the reflections could have been darker in value and they came out too light and that is a it's something that I tend to do I I actually tend to err on the side of being too light rather than too dark and it's something that I'm constantly trying to remind myself of that I need to add more saturation when I put down the paint because I know that watercolors dries lighter and that it's darker when it's wet but for some reason when I'm mixing colors my tendency is to not go very very dark and so that's definitely something that I want to work on and um, my approach I guess to reflections is that I think that they are more successful for some reason in paintings when they're really abstract so I already like painting abstract abstractly um, in even regular you know above this sh above the shoreline above not in the water that area is already abstract and so when I get to the water I want to keep it even more abstract so I try not to paint a lot of details and I'm working on using really broad big brush strokes and allowing the strokes to stand as they are in that first or second placement because I feel like what I've learned is that with watercolors there's a lot of movement that's captured from brush strokes in that wet and wet process and if I leave the brush stroke like that and I stop touching it I just love the 
just that it captures the movement of your stroke at the at that moment and so i'm trying to be really really aware of what direction i'm i'm putting my brush stroke in when i'm first putting it down and so again perhaps the reflections are too light because i am really trying hard not to overwork my paintings and so i figure it's down and maybe it's going to be too light but i don't want to touch it anymore and so you know with that being said that is just an example of how we can work on something how we can look at it and think it's not successful but still walk away with so many lessons and that's definitely something that's been a theme in my takeaways from painting recently and I'm really loving it. I'm really loving the process and I'm really learning that every time I, I sit down to paint, I do learn something new. And even if it's not something I'm completely proud of, which I don't even know if, if it will ever happen where I paint something where I, I'm 150% proud of what I did. Um, I don't know if that'll ever happen. But I'm happy solely because of the learning process and how it feels to gain insight. It's exciting. And um, just one last note is I finished up this painting with another experiment and I added clean water to the reflections. I don't think they were that successful either, but it works out. And I can't wait to paint next time. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.